I feel like I'm doing a lot of upscale videos as of late, but that's because there's quite a lot of them. Here's another one. This one is called Upscale and it is free and you can download it to your desktop. So let's take a look. And I have to tell you that I have not tried this more than with five images. This is not one that I usually or ever go to. So let's say if this can be a good contender. I downloaded this from here to my Windows. I'm using Windows to my desktop, but this is basically the website and that's where you need to go to get it. I will put the link in the description. Here you can see what you can get from it. By the way, before we go there, they will have a cloud-based um, model coming as well, which will give you some additional benefits and little features there. Right now for this desk desktop version, no internet required, five plus modes, it's fully customizable and it's free and open source. So that's what I used. And here again, you can then come here and click download. So let's take a look how this works. Here is what the upscale looks like as it's installed in my desktop. Now, I just ran this one image just to see what it would look like and kind of figure out what all these different steps entailed. So here's an example of that. It looks pretty sharp. So the way that you start this is, I'm gonna go here to the image, reset it. So this is basically your starting canvas here. So pretty clear instructions, step one, step two, step three, right? So I am going to select an image and let's say I select that one right here. This is from one of my mid journey images that I did one word prompts. This is for altruism, just FYI, if in case you're interested. Next, I need to select the model. Now, because this is more of an illustration, I thought maybe digital art is the best one for this one. Set the output folder. I have already set that. It goes to my downloads and to a folder called upscale. And then I will just click this purple upscale button. Now it will upscale this 1024 by 1024 image 4X. It goes to 4096 by 4096. So let's take a look. What I did notice in my um, first mm -hmm. experiments here is that this happens really quickly, right? Like I didn't even have a chance to finish my sentence and it was already done. So let's take a look. I'm very curious to see how this does with different types of images, not just these illustrations. Now I can see the difference here and it is certainly an upscaled image um, and it doesn't really lose a lot of actually hardly anything, meaning it didn't really change the image. And that's one of those typical complaints from, well, some people anyway, that the enhancers change the image also. So this one seems to keep it pretty intact. Like for example, if you look at this flower here on the bottom, it does not change. It just gets sharper. So I like this already. And also you can see it on these flowers here and the girl, pretty easy to notice. So I like that a lot. Now, because I already selected the output folder for this, that tells me that it goes directly to that folder. There's no download needed, no nothing, which is again, another wonderful thing. It's already now on my right folder and I can take it from there. Now let's see what else we have here. Show hide image settings. Here I can reset the image as I did. Here I can zoom in. So let's say if I zoom into 200. So now I can see more closely. Oh, this is cool. How this changes, right? And you can now see even better that it changed um, more or made it sharper and cleaner. So that's great. And then I can just click the show hide and get in and out of that. Let's try another image. So I'm going to reset the image from here and then I'm going to select an image from my computer to move forward. Here I selected this cyberpunk type of image that I am in love with this style. And if you watched my previous video, you might have seen that I use this same style. So let's take a look. Okay, digital art again, I'm going to use the same setting. It's already going to the right output folder and I'm just going to click upscaling. And this is fast. I cannot believe how fast it is. It's fantastic. I love this feature. Many of the upscalers take a lot longer. So you can see changes here uh, for sure. And again, looks exactly the same. There is no enhancement, which I really, really like. And bonus, it is free. So could you use this for a lot of different projects? Sure, if you need a larger image than 
1024, 1024, which is what you get from Midjourney. Now, of course, Midjourney also has an upscaler. You can try that too. But this is a great, potentially great tool to use and it 4x is it. By the way, there is also a double, um, which gives you a 16x upscale. They just run it twice. Uh, they do say here, note that this may not always work properly with all images. For example, images with a really large resolution. So we can test that as well here in a second. I want to now see just in general, what happens if I select this as a photo? Now, clearly this is not a photo, but I just want to see what happens. So let's take a look. And again, the beautiful thing that I love is that it goes directly to my folder and I don't need to do anything else about it. So no downloads, no nothing. Okay, this looks really sharp as well. So what I would do afterwards is just compare these when I'm in the folder or I pull them out of there and see which one looks the best. So let's look at the larger image here again, 200x. Oh yes, look at that eye. You can really see it in the eyeballs. Yeah, this is great. Okay, let's try, just because we are trying different things, let's try, I don't really know what the difference is between these different models, meaning because I haven't ran a lot of these different things. So I'm just going to, for the sake of playing and experimenting, looking at the different ones. Yeah, this looks good. They all look great so far anyway. So I'm not really seeing a lot of drastic difference here. Again, it's moving fast. Always a bonus when you're doing work or experimenting. Yeah, this looks a little bit blurrier, just, you know, at least to my eye. What do you think? Two more different ones. I will have a lot of images in my folder for these. This also seems to take just a tad longer, but again, this is still super fast. Okay, one more. Let's click out of it. Yeah, these all look great. Okay, let's take a look at another image, and this time let's take a look at a AI photo. So I'm resetting the image and then I'm bringing in a new image. Here is a steampunk uh, style image that I created. So I'm going to start it with that first general photo and let's see what that looks like. Now, some of these images that you get from Midjourney are already super sharp to begin with. So I'm not expecting a lot of differences which is okay, right? Like it doesn't really have to be sharper. The point here is that it's now a larger image that I can use somewhere where I need a larger image and it um, keeps everything the same. It is not changing this at all. So I can't really see a lot of difference here. Can you, I maybe my, I need better eyeballs. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference. You can see it in that mask, right? And in, in her hair or head. Now let's switch it to the next general photo mode or model. Again, I'm simply just looking at these different ones just to see what I can see, decipher. Uh, because maybe there's one that I like better than the other. See here how in her forehead it gets a bit blurrier of those little dots. And then it's basically the way that I work with these, any new tools really, is I basically take a look at it. I run the different um, mo models, different whatever settings I have, and then I basically mm. decipher which ones are giving me the best results for what I'm looking for. This one looks almost perfectly identical. It is also sharper. I can see it on the mask, which is great. Um, this would be one of my favorites. So I'm going to basically just see, okay, this is the remarkery. Uh, I don't know how to spell that exactly. Um, but that looks great. So I'm going to basically take a note of that. I might want to use that one moving forward with photos, right? AI photography. And then here is the next one. This is the ultra mix balanced. This one's also great. I mean, honestly, I could pick most of these, right? Maybe some of them give me a slightly better um, output than others, but so far these all look fantastic. One or actually two more. Let's even try the digital art with this one because I am curious to know what happens here with a photo in when it's actually a digital art. This also looks great. So really I could pick any of these general photos except the re is not one that was my favorite. 
Now, let's take a look at this digital art, what happens here. Okay, this one did go blurrier, see, or like more polished. So this is not something that I would use for this one, unless I was going for this look, right? Okay, great. So now again, let's look at one more. I'm going to reset the image and let's bring in a new image. I am curious to see what happens to this type of architectural image here. So let's start with the first photo model. This image also is not perfectly sharp to begin with. So, oh yes. So see that I'm looking at the back wall here, this, um, I don't even know what it is, tapestry art piece uh, texture, what happens to it. Also the flowers, this made it a bit blurry perhaps. Yes, you can also see it in the tiles and things. Some look sharper here. You can see it on the side. Okay, let's try the next one. Again, I'm simply just observing and figuring out which models I should use, which one gives me the best results. And that is what I do with every single new tool that I try so that I can then make the best decisions and make workflows faster. This one's pretty good. I like this one. Uh, this one is the second option. And then let's see this one that gave us a little bit of a blurrier image in the previous photo. So I am interested to see if that happens here as well. And then if it does, this would tell me that this is not perhaps something that I want to use with photos. However, this actually looks pretty good. So, <laughs> so far with this very short experiment, I would not be able to tell if I pick one model over another for my AI photos, right? I think for digital art, I would stick with digital art, although the other ones did a pretty good job as well. But like for this particular photo, I actually like this particular model. So let's keep going. It gave a really sharp image. So basically what I would do if I was super picky and because this is free, mind you, this makes life a lot easier. I can try these different ones for a variety of images um, or one image, but run all the models so I can pick the best one. I don't necessarily like this one as much. See how it uh, kind of, in my opinion, distorts the backdrop here a bit more. Um, but again, this is also completely subjective. This is just my opinion. And then also it depends what I would be going for. What is my goal here? Which is always something that I think about. What is the end result? Is this going on a magazine? Is it going on social media? Where is it going? Do I have other images that go with this? Am I going to do and make a video out of this or animation? So I take a lot of different things into consideration as I run through these things. Okay, one. Uh, let's try the digital art one more here and see what happens. Again, but you can see this is in real time. I'm not speeding this up at all. This is just how fast this happens and it's great. Okay. I don't really like the digital art as much. I mean, just in general. Now, could you use this again if this was the style that you were going for? Absolutely. I liked the middle one, the Re Macri, the best. Maybe I'm getting the better with the pronunciation here. Um, so this is great. This is just a quick walkthrough for you to show you what is possible with Upscale. It's free. It's fast and it gives you options and the cloud version is coming too. Now, I don't know if the cloud will be paid option, but if you want to upscale your images, you know, whether it's 4X or even 16X, actually one more thing before I go, let's try that. So I'm going to upscale this again with this. Um, oh, it actually already did. So this is it. Oh, that's interesting because I already upscaled this earlier and I clicked upscale. It just brought me that image up. So let's double upscale that. I don't know if it actually works now because I already upscaled it. So let's see what happens. But now it's going to give me a 16,384 by 16,384. 16x upscale. Still moving really fast. I almost stopped before I got to the end of it trying the double upscale. Oh, I see. See what happened is first it ran the first upscale and now it's running the second second upscale. That's interesting. I'm just basically, you know, geeking out on all of this stuff and figuring out how it works and then what works best for me. This seems to be just a bit slower, which could be understandable because now we're working with the bigger size. So tick tock, tick tock. I'm definitely not going to sing here or anything. So we'll just wait and I'll speed this up if need to. This 16x upscale, I don't think I would be using in a lot of different places um, unless I need something super big file size and um, that might be for print or something like that. But in general, 
general purposes, I would not have to upscale that much. But there are times where you may need to. And as you can see, the double upscale does take a longer time. I'm just curious to see what it will look like here in a second, maybe. They're doing their magic, they say. Wow, it still looks great. I really like this one. Now, do I need, again, this size? No, probably not, but, you know. Now, look at this. It's sharp. I wonder what this thing here is, by the way. Can you tell? <laughs> this is curious. All right, great. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, me just walking through and talking through uh, these different workflows and tools, hit the like button, subscribe, and I will do some more of this.